Do you guys remember this? The company with the funny name that we were expecting to be terrible was actually pretty good. The Minis Forums, or Minis Forum Desk Mini PC. Well, this was a AMD APU system, really tiny thing that was actually able to play some games. And we were really surprised by that. And I was like, you know, that really kind of sucks that it's on AMD's old architecture. Well, they were like, hey bro, we got you covered. This is the new Minis Forum Elite Mini series, complete with the AMD Zen 3 Crow architecture. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they are proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. And all builds are backed by the BLD Peace of Mind warranty. To get started building your next gaming PC, visit the BLD link in the description below. So it's kind of funny, the first one we took a look at, I said looked like, well it sure looks like a thin client, but it's like, it kind of looks like a network switch. Well they doubled down and made this one look like a modem. <laughs> anyway, this is the next uh, logical evolution of the uh, Minis Forum Desk Mini type APU PCs, only this one, like I said, runs on the Zen 3 5000 series APUs. This is actually gonna be our first time taking a look at it. Uh, not just this PC, but this particular CPU as a whole. This guy is going to be bigger than the other one because it has more heat that it has to sort of control. But hey, this is kind of a nice looking cobalt color. All the sides are ventilated except for, well, a couple of them, I guess. So size difference, as you can see, significant, but not huge. It kind of looks like a mini console. In fact, this could be a console killer, bro. No, probably not because of the latest gen architecture that's in hardware or consoles, but much bigger brick than the last one because remember, it has to uh, be able to keep 5000 series cool. Included in the box once again here are the same SATA port to uh, ribbon cable connectors that we saw on the desk mini. So that way you can add three or two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives, no, two and a half inch drives. Here's that vase amount I mentioned, so you can mount it to the back of a monitor or something, making a very stealth hideaway type PC. We've got a HDMI cable right here, power plug, and some extra 3M feet. And then we've got uh, the stand. So that's everything that's in the box. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna hook it up, we're gonna try and play some games on this. This does have the latest Radeon um, architecture in here. In fact, it's the, what they're calling an eight core, right? So it's eight core, 16 thread, Ryzen nine CPU. So I'm already curious as to what CPU this is because I don't know exactly. And then Radeon graphics, eight core, 2.1 gigahertz. So this is based off the latest APU, which is still Vega graphics. I want to point that out. I was really disappointed in AMD that they didn't release RDNA APU technology. However, we do know that all the RDNA APU type stuff went to latest gen consoles. So it makes sense that they launched there, get as much of the return on their investment as they could on the architecture, and then they'll bring it out to PC in the next generation um, CPUs, desktop CPUs, I'm sure. I think AMD also just knows, it makes sense to take those eight, the powerful APU um, units with the uh, RDNA 2 and to release it with uh, consoles because that's where we're gonna get the greatest adoption rate. And then PC enthusiasts for the most part are gonna look for discrete graphics cards before they would an APU. There are instances where an APU makes sense and a, a build like this for its small form factor and still highly capable, obviously media playback, this will play back 4K no problem whatsoever, making it a very good media, um, we'll call it a receiver. Not a media server, because obviously it's not big enough to be quote unquote a server, but it definitely would be a great media client to play back any of your 4K streaming services, your Hulus, your Netflix, and your Discovery Pluses, your Disney Pluses, and all that sort of stuff in beautiful 4K. When it comes to getting this on, it's clearly just a clip. It has these little standoffs that are perfectly spaced to fit into the vents. These feet right here are adhesived so that you can put them on the bottom here. And then if you don't want to have it upright, you can have it vertical, but on those rubber feet. I don't like the way this just sort of rests on there though. We'll be as careful as Jay's two cents is capable of being. How about that? So in terms of connectivity, in terms of connectivity, you've got two full-size display port, two HDMI, power plug, Kensington lock, headphone jack, microphone jack, 2.5 gig, uh, gig Lethernet. Ether, <laughs> 
2.5 gig ethernet LAN. So on the front, full size 3.0 uh, super speed, headphone, microphone again, a uh, USB-C and a power plug. Once again, because this is AMD and not Intel, means there is no Thunderbolt, which means the idea of using a uh, external GPU is not possible because again, not Thunderbolt. So with that said, can you go this way? I'd rather have the power plug at the bottom. Let's go ahead and get this all fired up. Let's get some games installed. Let's do some benchmarks. Let's see where it lands. Look at the size of the brick versus the actual PC. All right, so we'll kick things off with some Cinebench R20 here with our AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX with Radeon graphics, eight core, 16 thread at 3.3 gigahertz, Zen 3 architecture, goodness. We gotta see how good those Zen 3 crows are doing. All right, uh, I guess we'll just run, see what happens. When's the last time you saw a small form factor PC do Cinebench this fast? Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> it should not beat a 1950. It'll definitely beat a 1700 X. <laughs> Oh, it didn't. Oh yeah, I did. It beat it handedly at 4930. Okay, CPU temperature, CPU clock. Let's see what we got. 80, 84, 88, 89, 90. And that's where we start losing the clock. Look at that, 3850, 3825. Yeah, so 90 is the hard limit. Like that's where it's throttling itself. Look, 3800, 38. 3775, 3800. Well, I'm not surprised. That's a lot of cores and a lot of threads doing a very difficult workload in a very small form factor with a very tiny heat sink. <laughs> I think it's only surviving because of the liquid metal, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. All right, I got something I want to try here real quick. If this doesn't help the temps, nothing will. This is a 3000 RPM Delta fan. Not as fast as some of the blowing matrons, but just to give me an idea how much, Dude, there's so much air coming out the sides. Look, let me find something to, look. <laughs> That's how much air is coming out of the computer. Woo! Okay, see if we gain any clock. See, it shoots up to 4.5. It immediately drops down. No, it still hits 90, but 4,000. So 90 is clearly our thermal limit, but we're holding 4,000 now, four gigs. Uh-oh, we need to pour some LN2 in there. Nope, oh, there's 4,000 for a second. We're definitely gonna have a higher score this time because we have a higher average clock. Yeah, to a 5,078. <laughs> so this run right here, look at, the, look at the difference in height. That was the stock fan or the stock clock, right? And then that, those were the runs during that. This was the previous run, also 90. But if we look over here, you can see the clocks were much lower than they were there and there, right? So, hey, it worked. We're not gonna test gaming that way though because the iGPU isn't gonna throttle. All right, so we're gonna target 1080p medium type settings. It set us to 1600 by 900, which to be fair, doesn't look terrible. But 1920 by 1080, 144 hertz. This is a 144 hertz panel. Um, 2X MSAA, V-Sync's off, that's fine. Aspect ratio auto. Advanced graphics are currently set to quality preset medium. And that's why I said our target is gonna be. So let's see how the FPS does, oops, in Dirt Rally with that. So we'll go, sure, we'll do a custom race. It's pretty consistent. I mean, it's not great FPS, but it's not fluctuating all over the place so poorly that we can't make sense of it. Like it's not really jarring, but I definitely would lower the settings though. <laughs> Oh, get out of the way, sign, go, ah! See, now that the FPS is low enough, I feel like I'm losing fluidity because of the fact that it feels like it's laggy. I would like to thank the uh, Dirtfish Rally School that I attended for being able to complete this. Oh, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, bad, bad. Okay, I'm gonna stop it real quick because I'm gonna change the settings. See if we can't get it up to 60, what's it gonna take? All right, um, all right, low brought us up to 60 right there. I mean. Okay, the dirt doesn't look great, but you know what? If you're going by fast enough, <laughs> right? Like the textures here along the, that doesn't look great, but you know what? Again, if we're going fast like we should be. 
I like how I'm being nitpicky when I'm essentially gaming on a router. Now, Dirt Rally 2.0 is not a super easy title to run. It's really not. So that's why I kind of started off on what I feel is one of the harder titles that we're going to be testing today. Oh, wow. I was looking at the sky because you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 1080p low, Dirt Rally 2.0, completely doable. So GPU temp maxed out at 80. That makes sense. It's inside the CPU. GPU was loaded the entire time. <laughs> it was loaded, bro. <laughs> and then 2100 megahertz on the core clock. Uh, CPU hit 90. This is a TJ Maxx 105 CPU, guys. So yes, it's going to be warm. There's a lot of power packed into that. Um, but the FPS, as you can see, was all like this is where we were on high or medium settings. And then you can see it jumped up when we went on low settings, but it fluctuated more. Look at this. See, we had some dips, and that's when we went through that wooded area. Then we got out into the open. It was very consistent. And then with medium settings, it really fluctuated a lot. This is what I mean by I would take 45 FPS locked versus 40 to 60 fluctuate, if that makes sense. All right. 49 FPS in the menu, but it's set to ultra. We're obviously not going to do ultra. We're going to do medium. Okay, it's still slightly... Ah, what the heck did I spawn into? <laughs> Oh, wrong button. Oh, I thought, oh, it was F. Okay, I was like, what the hell? Oh. <laughs> ah! Okay, do I need to go low on this? Because I'm not getting 60 and I'm not caring for that. Get off me, bro. Give me that eyeball. Whee! God, I hate those eyeball guys so much. And we got seven health. They're gonna sneeze on me and I'm gonna die. Aw, oh, see? Okay, so 1080p low. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty chaotic space right there. So, I mean, I, we were 50, 60 FPS on low during the intense stuff as high as 80. You know what's funny is it, it doesn't feel that incredibly better than the previous uh, version we looked at, but obviously you have way more uh, piece, or CPU power than we had there. What about something like counter Strike Global Offensive? counter Strike Global uh, Offensive. All right, obviously we're gonna try out some Counter-Strike, probably one of the most, if not the most popular online PC game in history, going all the way back to 1999 in his previous versions. But anyway, um, if we take a look at what settings we have here, we are currently set to Full screen, no, full screen, that's what we want. Auto set to high, and we are obviously at 1080p. Makes sense because of the fact that this is a, this is a game that will play on a potato. But this is also a game people want the most FPS you're gonna play competitively. So why not just go into a casual match with actual humans so everyone can just yell at me? Oh God, the FPS is like going into the red in the 40s. All right, here we go. So we went down to 2X MSAA. Jump! Oh, they hit me, but it was, it barely hit me. It was probably a scout. It's around 90 to 100 and something FPS. It's moving so quickly, it's impossible to see what it is. But it's jittery, like it stutters right now. Get out of here. I don't know what gun he had. I think it was a pistol. I'm outnumbered. <laughs> Jeez. So I said, I'm outnumbered. I saw two of them. All right, the FPS in Counter-Strike, not great. Not, not as good as I was hoping, honestly. I thought the, with a, a game as old as this, that would run better. Um, let's take a look at what the temps were while we were playing. Again, max is 75. It was fairly low during Counter-Strike. Um, this is when we were playing the first Counter-Strike before it crashed and then came back. And then this is when we were playing Doom Eternal up to it. So 2100 megahertz, not bad. Remember, an APU is limited in its RAM speed because it's sharing system RAM and DDR4 is nowhere near as fast as GDDR6, obviously. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tear it open now. This particular unit, I was told, is running a uh, better thermal paste solution than what they typically would because this is obviously a, a lot of power and a lot of heat to try and tame. And the air coming out of it's cool though. That's the thing, it doesn't feel hot. 
Like it doesn't feel like it has any sort of issues keeping itself cool. But I am curious as to what the internal layout is, the upgradability. So to do that, we're gonna take out our trusty iFixit kit. Now in terms of the cooling, what I wanna point out is this is actually using liquid metal instead of thermal paste. All right, so this looks very similar, similar, similar to last time. Like I said, it is using an NVMe right here. There's no sort of thermal pad or anything on there, so something to keep in mind with that. This is the antenna for the wireless. Use non-metal stuff if you're gonna be jamming anything down in there. There we go. And there's the computer. So you gotta go through all that. Be careful of the ribbon cable to get to the RAM if you wanna change out the RAM for, for any reason. Here is your active cooling. As you can see, there's a separator plate. So the fan goes up in here, which brings cool air in. Oh, so that's a downfire fan. Okay, so that's blowing cool air in and pushing down on the CPU. That's, a, that's metal too, by the way. It's very sturdy. Your IO, just like, this is kind of like what you would find on the front of your case, right? With your USB-C, you got your ports and your power switch. This is just a ribbon cable version of those annoying, <clears throat> those annoying plugs that you would use on your, on your motherboard front panel connectors. That's all this is right here. CMOS battery, downfire fan, and yeah, I'm not gonna take this off because they said it's liquid metal, but I can't really see down in there, so I can't tell you anything about it. I don't know what this plug, these three plugs are right here, these three pins. But this is, that's the computer right there. So you can see just how tiny this is. I mean, if you think about the fact that we were playing games at all on this, it's pretty incredible. And then in terms of the CPU, it's eight cores and 16 threads. It's, it's, it's essentially, like I said, the 5900HX laptop cut down to be even smaller to fit in this small form factor, making this an excellent, look this, I'm thinking to myself, like how would I use this when we do these types of reviews? Well, for me per personally, this would make perfect sense to put in a room that has a TV, maybe that's not a smart TV, so you can have access to like any of the streaming content you normally uh, would have on a smart TV, like your, like I said, Hulu, Disney Plus, Discovery Plus, all that sort of stuff. So you'd, ha you'd have access to it, and you would be able to do basic gaming and or even like Steam in-home streaming. If you had a big powerful gaming computer somewhere, you could be streaming to this. This obviously has a very powerful decoder to be able to deal with decoding that stream. And then if you have a fast enough uh, uh, intranet or ethernet in your house, then you'd be able to play in a, another room on a, on a computer like this. So let me put this back together and then we'll kind of give you some final thoughts. The HX90, it's obviously an evolutionary Im improvement over the uh, Desk Mini. The CPU is obviously stronger, but to be honest, in terms of gaming, it didn't have nearly the feel of being better versus, okay. The CPU obviously is faster. It's a newer generation. It's Zen 3 architecture, which is just super efficient. The IPC on it is really high. The clock speed on this one, it's really high. And it's got more cores than we obviously had on the, the Mini's form, where I, or the uh, Desk Mini, where I believe this was four core eight thread. But iGPU technology on this is not really advanced from this family because they just sort of carried over previous technology from the Vega graphics and added a couple more cores to it, which made really not a huge tangible difference. Both of these are fully capable of gaming at 1080p low settings. Like we showed in our previous video, if you haven't seen it, you should go and watch it. This one right here obviously just gives you a beefier CPU, uh, which would make this much more capable of actually doing things like basic video rendering, basic photo editing. Uh, it, it starts to really bridge the gap between being a small form factor like this that's capable of being like a media machine or, or content consumption machine, whereas this starts to bridge into closer to being a desktop, but not quite. It's one of those things where if it had RDNA 2 technology in it, or some sort of an iGPU based on RDNA 2, the same stuff you're seeing in the PS5 and the, the Series X, then this would be leaps and bounds better. But it was a huge improvement for the CPU, marginal at best for the GPU because this is still old tech when it comes to the iGPU. So it performs exactly as you would expect for any laptop running the 5900HX. 
it's good. It's got probably a better cooling solution too than you find in a laptop, which is why it actually was able to hold its clock speeds a lot better and not thermal throttle immediately, although it does run warm. 59, eight core, 16 threads. That's a lot to ask one little like 90 millimeter fan with a really thin heat sink to keep cool doing uh, any sort of computational load. But anyway, if you guys wanna check it out, the link is down below. I do feel that this would be a great computer to put in like a bedroom or something where you just wanna have basic computing, maybe web browsing, light gaming, stream in, uh, Steam and home streaming, and a media consumption device in an area where you don't have a computer. It obviously fits the bill for that, which makes the 2.5G LAN on here worthwhile. If you have an in-home LAN that can send 2.5 gigabit signal, then obviously stream or a Steam in-home stream would be even better because of the better uh, bit rate. So sound off down below, which you would use this for. I still think at some point, I'm gonna take the guts out of one of these machines and throw them into something that shouldn't be a computer and turn it into a computer. Because remember, we did that video where we showed how you can take the uh, mini SATA M.2 connector and actually turn it into a 4X uh, GPU device so that we can actually run a discrete GPU on something like this. We would just have to take out the wireless card and stick that in there. And we would have ourselves a discrete graphics card. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Sound off down below, down below what you think about the HX90. How would you use it? And of course, we will see you guys in the next one. I like the color though. Cobalt, neat. That is cobalt, right? It's not gray. <laughs>